Welcome back to topic 39 for Algebra 2, Multiplying and Dividing Rational Functions. In part 3, we're going to practice dividing rational expressions. We're going to start off with this property, a divided by b divided by c divided by d equals a divided by b times d divided by c, or a times d divided by b times c. And again, here we really want to simplify if possible. So we're going to be dealing with factors. So as a reminder back to middle school, to divide rational expressions, you need to flip or use the reciprocal of the second term and then multiply the expressions. Now, sometimes people refer this to keep, change, flip. I always learned it as don't ask why, just flip and multiply whenever you see dividing fractions. So to each their own, choose whatever works best for you. I have to say that though with dividing rational expressions and remembering what we do with identifying restrictions on the domain, only with dividing so with dividing only, we have to look at both the numerator and the denominator in the second fraction when restricting in our domain. So the numerator and the denominator are restricted in the second fraction. And we're going to see that in action in our next examples. So moving to example number one, x squared minus 4x minus 21 divided by 5x plus 15 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 70 divided by x squared minus 100. So here, what I'm going to first do is just, instead of dividing the fractions, I'm going to flip the second fraction and multiply. So multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the same thing as x squared minus 4x minus 21 divided by 5x plus 15 times x squared minus 100 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 70. Now I'm going to look into factoring. So with our first fraction, we have x squared minus 4x minus 21 in our denumerator. Denumerator. Numerator. Whew, that's a new word. So we can rewrite that as that's the same thing as x minus 7 times x plus 3 because they multiply together to get negative 21 but when you add those two values of negative 7 and 3 we get negative 4. Our denominator 5x plus 15 we can factor out a 5 here and we're left with x plus 3. We're going to multiply this by x squared minus 100. Now here we have a difference of squares. So we can rewrite this as x plus 10 times x minus 10 divided by, now our denominator of x squared plus 3x minus 70, what are two numbers that multiply to get negative 70, but when you add, give you positive 3? Well, we have x plus 10 and x minus 7. So multiplying across, now we can reduce. We have an x plus 7 in the numerator and an x minus 7 in the denominator. I'm sorry, x minus 7 in the numerator and an x minus 7 in the denominator. Moving forward, we have 
an x plus 3 in the numerator and an x plus 3 in the denominator. Then we have an x plus 10 in the numerator, x plus 10 in the denominator. So what we're left with is x minus 10 divided by 5. But remember what I said before with our restrictions for the domain. So in this case, we know that x can't equal, we have negative 3 from our first one, negative 10, and positive 7. But we also need to look at the numerator of our second fraction. And that's because originally, our problem, this x plus 10, x minus 10, was in our denominator. So we have to be really careful because we can never divide by zero, no matter at what point you are in your problem. So since we originally started with our x squared minus 100, we also can't have x equaling positive 10 as well. Moving on to the next example. 3x squared plus 13x minus 10 divided by 6x squared divided by 3x squared minus 2x. Now because this has no denominator, it's automatically over 1. So if I were to rewrite this, we get 3x squared plus 13x minus 10 divided by 6x squared times 1 divided by 3x squared minus 2x. Now looking to factor our first um, quadratic that we have here, this first polynomial, ooh, had a little blank right there, 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. Now remember, if we want to factor this, we need to multiply the coefficient of the first term by that constant in the last term. So 3 times negative 10 gives us negative 30. And now we need to think about, okay, what are my factors of negative 30 that would add together to get positive 13? So our factors of negative 30, we can have 15 and negative 2. And if we add them together, we end up with positive 13. So if we were to factor that first numerator of the first fraction, we have, we can break those two apart and we can factor by grouping. So we would get 3x squared plus 15x minus 2x minus 10. And remember, whenever you factor by grouping, we always want to put common terms together that would have common factors that we can take out. For example here, with 3x squared plus 15, we can take out a 3x. And we're left with x plus 5. Whereas our negative 2x and negative 10, we can factor out a negative 2 and get x plus 5. Now these two values match, which is what we want. So that's one factor pair. So we have x plus 5 is one factor pair. Now the other factor pair is my 3x and my negative 2. So that's going to be my other factor pair, 3x minus 2. And you can multiply these together to make sure that you still get 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. Now this is all over 6x squared, and then we're still multiplying by 1 over 3x squared minus 2x. Here I can factor out an x and get 3x minus 2. Now in terms of reducing, I notice that I have a 3x minus 2 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. So they both cancel out and reduce to 1. So I'm left with x plus 5 in my numerator divided by 6x squared times x to the first. So since they have the same base of x, we can add our exponents and get 6x to the third. 
and that is my answer. Now, quickly, let's just add the domain restrictions that you have here. So where, obviously, x can't equal 0. We want to look back to our original problem. Now, because we have a 1 in the denominator, 1 doesn't equal 0. We don't need to worry about that. We only need to worry about when we have actual variables. So what I'm going to focus on is my 3x squared minus, x, minus 2x. So we already know that x cannot equal 0, and we also have 3x minus 2 can't equal 0. So if you were to add 2 to both sides, we would get 3x cannot equal 2, or in other words, x can't equal 2 thirds. So those are my two restrictions there. Moving on to number three, looks like a doozy, I know. x squared minus 6x minus 27 divided by 2x squared plus 2x divided by x squared minus 14x plus 45 divided by x squared. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just rewrite this first. So we have x squared minus 6x minus 27 divided by 2x squared plus 2x. Now we have divided by x squared minus 14x plus 45 divided by x squared. And because since we're dividing here, don't ask why, let's just flip the second and multiply. We have x squared minus 6x minus 27 divided by 2x squared plus 2x times x squared in our numerator. And then we have x squared minus 14x plus 45 in our denominator. Okay, let's get into factoring. So this can break down. We have x squared minus 6x minus 27 in the numerator of our first fraction. We know that we need something that will multiply together to get negative 27, but add to get negative 6. So we can factor that to be x minus 9 and x plus 3 times x squared. And we can divide that by 2x squared plus 2x. Well, there we know that they both share a 2x. So we can factor that to get 2x times x plus 1 times, now x squared minus 14x plus 45. Two numbers that multiply together to get positive 45, but add to get a negative 14. So right off the bat, we know that our signs are both going to be negative because they're adding together to get a negative number, but multiplying to get a positive. So we'll get x minus 9 and x minus 5. Now we can go ahead and reduce if possible. We have an x minus 9 in the numerator, x minus 9 in the denominator. And also here, we have an x squared in the numerator, and we just have an x in the denominator. So in the numerator, this is going to lose one value in denominator. That will cancel. So we'll be left with x times x plus 3 divided by 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 5. And then where are restrictions? So where, now if we look at our first problem, x can't equal 0, x can't equal negative 1, x can't equal 9, and x can't equal 5. And you can also think, well, we also have to make sure we look at this first value of x squared. So if x squared were set equal to 0, that means that x can't equal 0. It's already covered, so we don't need to repeat it. And we are all set. 
that was part three of topic 39. Thank you so much for watching.